Hello and welcome to NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Today we're coming to you from four different locations. That is the Nation Media Group, Safari Link Aviation, Serena Hotel here in Nairobi and Safaricom House. Well, what do all these have to do with wildlife, you might ask? Well, you may be surprised to know that they are in fact amongst companies that are giving back to conservation. In this show, I'm going to find out what they're doing, why they're doing it and what impact it's making. First off, we start at the Nation Media Group. So now I'm in the NTV newsroom and of course the NTV has certainly played its role in conservation issues by highlighting them through the NTV Wild documentary series that airs every Saturday night and also through the locally produced show NTV Wild Talk that airs every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Now remember the NTV Wild series as a whole is a partnership between the NGO Wildlife Direct, between the Kenya Wildlife Service and of course NTV as well. Now one man who was key in in fact making this happen was the general manager for television right here at the Nation Media Group and that is Linus Kaikai, Kai, also my boss. Good to have you with us. Welcome Thank to you. NTV Wild Talk. Thank you so much. So Linus look in 2015 Paula Kahumbu the CEO of Wildlife Direct came to you and gave you a proposal. She asked you to air some wildlife documentaries that she had managed to get from National Geographic. Take us through how this all began. How did it start? It was actually way back in 2014 that Paul and I met in a very interesting setting, somewhere near Loyangalani, somewhere near the shores of uh, Lake Turkana. We had gone there and with her assistance to interview Dr. Richard Leakey whose story in Kenyan wildlife conservation circles, and in fact global wildlife conservation circles, is very well known. And uh, this was an interview for the documentary that I produced that year, which is Moi, Moi and Moi Gai. And we were going there to speak to Dr. Liki in his capacity as the former head of civil service. And among the people that made that possible is Paula Kahumbu, the director of uh, Wildlife Direct. As we were waiting to talk to Dr. Richard Leakey, uh, we had a long chat with uh, Paula, and she said, why don't we do something seismic on the Kenyan local television scene, similar to what uh, the likes of National Geographic do? And uh, the conversation really was one way because we both agreed that the time is right for us to do that. And she said, to get us started, she's managed to get a number of documentaries that can air. And I told her, Paula, bring the documentaries. We'll get the airtime to air those documentaries. And in uh, the, the, uh, the interior of Turkana, somewhere between Loyangalani and Lodwa, um, the idea of NTV Wild was born. Now, the other thing that came up in our discussion is how then do we progress the conversation so that it's not just about the documentary that was done by uh, maybe National Geographic, maybe BBC um, or, or other producers. How do we progress the conversation? And we agreed also that this should be preceded by uh, a talk. You will remember because you hosted it, right. the launch of the NTV Wild series was preceded by a very long discussion with, among others, Paula, Jonathan Scott, Jonathan as well, Scott and the a producer was on uh, Skype right. live, live. And I think from that launch alone, NTV Wild took shape. If we look at the media in Kenya, the programming is very full of some local productions, international soaps, and news. We never really have wildlife um, documentaries or stories taken center stage. So, in a sense, did you think that this was almost a risk? That lack of attention on wildlife by the Kenyan local media is what spurred our move to pushing this idea that NTV should air, air NTV Wild and should focus on wildlife. If you look, even as we air NTV Wild, the bulk of the productions come from elsewhere. 
you rarely find locally produced wildlife shows in Kenya. Why? Yet wildlife is one of our biggest uh, spaces in, in this country. Uh, tourism is the biggest foreign exchange earner for this country. But you look at the proportion of productions that come out of the wildlife scene uh, locally, NTV Wild, especially NTV Wild Talk, uh, is, is playing a game of its own league because they, there are no players in the local sector playing in that particular space. Why do you think wildlife and conservation issues have never been top on the agenda? I, I guess the producers are to blame. Audiences follow the content. Uh, for a long time, the Kenyan media will focus more on politics, will focus a lot on the political parties, on individuals, leaders, and really about the issues. I think NTV has done a good thing in trying to say, let's set the agenda when it comes to wildlife conservation. And it's very much in the spirit um, of the Nation Media Group, uh, because years back, you remember a campaign that was driven by the Nation Media Group to get the Abadeas uh, game park fenced. And that was done very successfully through a concerted campaign of corporates uh, led by the Nation Media Group. I think media must take deliberate steps to focus on wildlife. It's a very, very important uh, space. And I want to take, for example, reactions we've been receiving on, on NTV Wild and NTV Wild Yeah, what, what impact has it been having? Has it been creating that, uh, that attention and also that perhaps behavioral change? It's, it can be summed up to one question. Viewers are saying, where have we been? Where have you been, the media? I didn't know that's the Maasai Mara through local lenses. I didn't know that's the giraffe center. I didn't know that's how Lewa looks like. Through NTV Wild and NTV Wild Talk, the impact is palpable. You have viewers who now say they know better. They have the desire to see those places. I remember an episode on Mzima Springs. That was the first one. The first one. The first episode, we had calls. We had emails. We had, we had it on social media. People asking, is that Kenya? But yes, of course it is. But because it's being told by local lenses for the first time, the authenticity is there. The discussion you had by the uh, spring, that is epic. Many people would remember that. And why do you think this is so important for conservation? When we talk about NTV Wild, NTV Wild Talk, and generally the media covering and investing in conservation stories. Just remember how NTV Wild started. It started with a particular focus on poaching. Um, poaching is a big, big issue. The elephant's populations have been decimated since the 70s up to now. And the media must help draw the line. This is a moral question. Conservation is a moral question. And it must be led by conscious media coverage. And this is what NTV Wild is doing and NTV Wild, uh, uh, Wild Talk is doing. Focus attention on conservation of wildlife. Now, what we're also trying to do through this show is to create ownership. Because Kenyans tend to see conservation sometimes as a foreign concept. It's the work of conservationists, it's the work of tourists. But you do have a role as a Kenyan out there to make sure that the elephants that are trying to make their way out of the Meru National Park actually get safe, package, uh, safe uh, passage. Because if you don't do that, our animals will be in peril. Our nature will be destroyed. So I think on that front, creating awareness and cultivating ownership, uh, NTV Wild and NTV Wild Talk are doing very, very well. When we look at our corporate social responsibility, what else is in the pipeline for Nation Media Group as a whole? Uh, if you look at what the Daily Nation, which is the biggest circulation newspaper in this country, has been doing for the last one year, on page two, just highlighting the nice places, the tourist destinations, you open Daily Nation on any day, you will get something positive about the tourism sector. We are saying that as a Nation Media Group, we are ready to take the lead just in terms of showcasing the good side of our country. Because there are a lot of unpleasant things that also happen in this country, but that doesn't change the fact that Masai Mara 
is the most beautiful uh, tourist destination in this country. It doesn't change the fact that our white sandy beaches of uh, the south coast are some of the best in the world. NTV Wild and Nation Media Group must continue pushing the conservation agenda to make sure that these areas are preserved. Our animals are safe. What's your favorite animal and really what does wildlife and nature mean to you? Very uh, personal question <laughs> yeah. if I can put it that way. I come from Transmara, which is home to the Mara Triangle. And uh, that will tell you that from a very early age, I've interacted with a lot of animals. Um, a majority of people like the lion. You know what? <laughs> I like the lion too. Oh, really? <laughs> but not the way it leads its life. Uh, hunting and uh, it's a very selfish animal. Yeah. Proud as it is, very, very selfish. Uh, I am more uh, attracted to elephants, uh -huh. graceful animals. They're actually not as destructive as perceived. Right. I know you've carried some episodes <laughs> from uh, Amboseli yes, and, uh, and Kajado's side. Yes. They'll disagree with me when I talk about <laughs> uh, the destruction bit. Uh, because I think elephants are very gentle animals. Yeah. And uh, look at them at how they are structured around families. They're very, very close to human beings. They're just our huge, bigger colleagues. I think they function more like us, especially when it comes to the family <laughs> setup. Sometimes better than us, some people would argue. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. So the elephants have won you over. Absolutely. Great. Well, thank yeah. you so much for joining us on NTV Wild Talk. And we certainly look forward to much, much more work done here at NTV and Nation Media Group for conservation. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Joining me, my general manager of television here at the Nation Media Group, Linus Kaikai, speaking about how the Nation Media Group has contributed to conservation. Conservation. Next, I move on to an airline that is SafariLink Aviation. So this is the SafariLink Lounge here at the Wilson Airport. Now, we have mentioned SafariLink so many times on NTV Wild Talk, and that's because they have very generously offered us flights to whatever destination we need to go to in order to bring you the show NTV Wild Talk. And that is thanks to the managing director of SafariLink Aviation, that is John Buckley, who now joins me. Great to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Now, John, as I mentioned, you know, uh, Safari Link has done so much for our production, that is NTV Wild Talk. Now, when the CEO of Wildlife Direct, that's Paula Kahumbu, reached out <laughs> to you and said, hey, John, you know, we need to go to, uh, to Salvo. That was for our first episode. Uh, you said, yeah, sure, you know, how many people and how can we help? And you put us on a flight and got us there and back. Why did you offer to support us? Why would anybody stand in the way of Paula is one answer. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> No, we have a, um, a culture in the company of helping conservation projects and anything that we can do to assist, we are willing to do so. Um, and that includes flights, helping people with accommodation if they need it, things like that, just to help everything work smoothly. Well, why is that? Where has this culture been cultivated from? Well, we started uh, primarily as a tourist um, airline and as part of that we need the wildlife there we become very closely involved with the people in the destinations where we fly to and it just became a natural thing that we wanted to help specifically the places we went to people we'd got to know organizations that we trusted so if we helped them we knew that the money if we were raising money would go to the right causes wouldn't be squandered uh, for example, Colobus Conservation on the coast, we help them, we help Lewa Conservancy, and it's just grown from there. Take us through what our Safari Link Aviation does to help conservation. You touched on the Colobus monkeys in Diani. Let's, let's start there. Yes, the, we started a service to Diani, and what we're trying to do is the, everywhere we go to, or all the main places, we try and have a project that we support. The first one we supported was Mount Kenya Trust. We plant uh, through Mount Kenya Trust enough trees each year to cancel out our carbon dioxide emissions. Oh, really? Um, and that has several benefits that the, we're wiping out the carbon dioxide. The ladies who plant the trees get a financial 
payment for planting the trees and it's a very important water catchment area for Kenya. So that was a triple gain on that one. Right. We then started going to Diani um, and we were looking for a project and I was introduced to somebody connected with it and it went on from there and we give a certain amount from each ticket to Colobus Conservation and then I got dragged in as chairman as well. So. <laughs> okay, so now you're stuck with that I am, one. <laughs> I am there, yes. Right, and what else are you doing? Because you fly to other locations too, such as Lewa. Lewa is um, a natural one for us to become involved with, the Lewa Conservancy. Um, we started just giving um, a certain amount for each ticket to the conservation. Then, of course, with the Lewa Marathon, we got involved. Sure. Uh, I did eight marathon or half marathons. Oh, really? Um, and this year we had 23 of our staff running in the half marathon. Awesome. It's become a, a company bonding exercise as well, but it's behind a good cause. We also support or uh, help support a couple of schools, one on the outskirts of the Mara and one on the outskirts of Samburu. Things like pens, rulers, all the essentials for the primary schools. Well, well, overall, John, I mean, there's so much that Safari Link is doing. I mean, primarily, of course, you are an airline, so many people might think, hey, we're, you know, just flying from Nairobi to various destinations. But there's a lot more. And one of the things that many people notice when they walk into this lounge or also when they get on board your planes is that big sticker, hands off our elephants. You can't forget about <laughs> that. Well, no, that, that was another Paula what project. Was that? <laughs> right. Tell us she more. Was, I was... Anu Vahora, the sales and marketing director, and myself were at a workshop, um, must be now over two years ago, and Paul had made a very passionate appeal for support for her Wildlife Direct, Hands Off Our Elephants campaign that she was just starting at that time. And over lunch, we came to the conclusion we could stick stickers on our aircraft, um, and it would have a big impact because every tourist was going to climb the steps yep. that we fly and see it right next to them and it's gone off there and the, and the stickers are still there they haven't fallen off yet <laughs> they haven't that's <laughs> a good thing you know john what impact is all of this having on uh, on on the environment itself and the people and the animals that are affected but also on your passengers who come and go and use safari link well Several of the projects, like Colobus Conservation for example, they bring in school children every week and sometimes it's between 20 and 40 and they spend half a day or if they're very young or full day if they're a bit older and what we're trying to do there is they learn about the environment and conservation, catch them when they're young so that it becomes part of their culture. So if a monkey is not there for stone throwing practice it's there because it needs to be there and right. look at and that is what we've been trying to do with the schools. Right and John I'll just interrupt you for a moment and remind our viewers that we are actually here at the Wilson Airport and therefore if you are hearing any noise that is because <laughs> there are Safari Link planes uh, landing and taking off. Go ahead. Yes we recently been involved in a project uh, again near Isiola where we've been helping uh, run a, a camp. We provided uh, support financially and materials, t-shirts, things like that. Yeah. Important is to get to children or the population when they're young because then it becomes ingrown that they, it's just part of looking after nature. Of course, you know so many people also say that it's really important to start with the children when they're young and instill this sort of culture and belief in them. You know, you are the managing director of Safari Link, so ultimately CSR projects or whatever happens sort of falls under you. But does this mean that within you, you have that passion for wildlife and conservation? Because it's got to come from someone, a leader. Can you imagine Kenya with no animals? Not at all. There's lots of places for tourists in this world to go to. And one of the big attractions of Kenya, obviously beautiful scenery, friendly people, but the animals are still one of the biggest attractions. So in part it's, we're trying to promote the company through that, but it, we just need, to, we felt, all of the staff felt that we need to do something, and, and it's just grown from there. 
And what's your opinion on other airlines? Because of course there are thousands of others, but not all of them are doing what Safari Link's doing. What do you think, if we look at the aviation industry as a whole, what do you think it can do to help conservation? I think, I wouldn't necessarily agree with you. I think a lot of the airlines have got projects. Um, Virgin, for example, had a project. British Airways have one. A lot of the projects nowadays are more slanted towards humanitarian aspects right. and that is also equally important uh, medical camps um, and similar projects yeah. so there are is a lot of things are done on through the airlines and not just airlines corporates uh, people like Serena hotels put a lot of effort into it I mean years and years ago they started the tree planting in Amboseli yeah. I remember that well as an industry do you think more can be done I suppose more can always be done? More can be done. Obviously tourism has had a really heavy, two, hard two years and obviously the money you spend on conservation projects comes off the bottom line project, the profit. So shareholders have got to also go along with the idea that you're going to spend some of the money going back into the communities, conservation projects, education, medical. Right. Uh, but there's an increasing awareness worldwide that we have to do something so and otherwise we won't have a future. That is true. John, thank you so much and congratulations to SafariLink for all the great work you're doing. Thank you very much We indeed. will of course continue flying with us, so <laughs> long as I'm flying with you rather. See, I say flying with us because I already <laughs> feel like I'm part of SafariLink. But uh, thank you for your support as well. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure. With me, the Managing Director of SafariLink Aviation, speaking about what they do to give back to conservation. And John mentioned the Serena Hotels. Well, after the break, we're going to head there. But first, here now is your chance to win an awesome prize. Here's our wild guest question. What spurred the move to start airing NTV Wild and NTV Wild Talk? What spurred the move to start airing NTV Wild and NTV Wild Talk? To participate, you must like the NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer on the timeline associated with this question. The first person to answer correctly wins free entry for three people to the Giraffe Centre in Nairobi and will have the opportunity to get up close to some incredible giraffes and feed them too. The winner will also get one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply, which can be found on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Last week's lucky winner has been announced on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Welcome back to NTV Wild Talk, now coming to you from the Serena Hotel here in Nairobi. Before we start the conversation though, here's a reminder of our wild guest question. What spurred the move to start airing NTV Wild and NTV Wild Talk? What spurred the move to start airing NTV Wild and NTV Wild Talk? To participate, you must like the NTV Wild Facebook page and post your answer on the timeline associated with this question. The first person to answer correctly wins free entry for three people to the Giraffe Centre in Nairobi and will have the opportunity to get up close to some incredible giraffes and feed them too. The winner will also get one bottle of wine courtesy of Wines of the World and a gift hamper courtesy of Wildlife Direct. Terms and conditions apply, which can be found on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Last week's lucky winner has been announced on the NTV Wild Facebook page. Well, joining me now here at the Serena Hotel is the managing director of the group, and that is Mahmoud Jam Mohammed. Now, Serena Hotels 
are not just your average hotels. They have been involved in conservation for years now. And we're about to find out a little bit more. Thanks very much for joining us on NTV Wild Talk. Thank you. Pleasure to have you with us. I'm going to start by asking you why Serena Hotels agreed in the first place to accommodate NTV Wild Talk when we came forward to you and said, hey, we need to go to Mzima Springs or hey, we need to go to Amboseli. Can you put us up? Because not every hotel chain would do that. Well, I think, uh, you know, the request initially came through Pola and we have a lot of respect for her. Uh, she's a great person has does a lot for conservation and um, you know the fact that NTV was also playing its part uh, these were two responsible parties that we were dealing with so yes the answer was go for it well it is highly appreciated um, that Serena has supported us in what we're trying to do as NTV which is highlight wildlife and conservation issues and your support to us certainly does help us to do our job but Serena has been doing its job for years and years now how have you been involved in conservation across the country I think we you know first our corporate mission statement is very clear uh, we've got to play our part in conserving the environment um, and we we believe that uh, you know we be we are long-term players we've been in this country 40 years close to 40 years we've been in Tanzania 20 years we hope and pray that we can be here for many many more years to come and uh, I think if we uh, as long-term players, it is our responsibility to make sure that we play our part in conserving the environment, uh, in being responsible, whether it's the way we um, dispose our garbage or our effluence. Um, we have to make sure that the communities that live around where we have operations see some real benefits uh, out of um, tourism and uh, we've also got to you know play our part in terms of education and when 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 I heard about the NTV wild uh, program uh, I honestly believe that amongst your viewers perhaps there are future leaders of Kenya and uh, if we can if we can get just 20 of them on board, they will play their part when they are in leadership position. Certainly. Well, talk us through some of uh, Serena's projects because it really ranges from tree planting to turtle conservation at the coast. Uh, you spread across the board. Tell us more. I think uh, if we talk about our tree planting, um, you know, about 25 years ago, uh, the damage that was done to trees because of the rising water table in Amboseli, the destruction um, through by elephants during drought periods. Uh, at, one, at one stage, I remember 25 years ago, Amboseli was a dust bowl. So we as a company decided that uh, we had to uh, start a tree planting uh, program. We even consulted Vangari Mathai, who at that time uh, supported the program, advised us, and uh, since then I think we planted hundreds of thousands of trees there. In the year 2015, uh, I think as a company we planted 90,000 trees. So Amboseli um, was was a real need, and I'm delighted that after we started uh, a few years later, some of our competitors uh, also started the tree planting program so and they're doing well so as a group I think you know we have done something to 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 help Amboseli. In the Mount Kenya area uh, there was a lot of loss of indigenous trees now if you see our tree planting efforts there because we went on to planting indigenous trees we didn't really want to make just an impact by planting trees that will grow fast. 
we, we said we have to reintroduce indigenous trees. And over the last 20 years, the impact on Humbe Forest and the Mount Kenya Park is, is, is tremendous. Um, the good thing is, on, on our tree planting efforts, we can at least measure our success because we have records of trees that we planted and that trees that have survived and some that have not survived. Um, you know, we also have a butterfly program, for example, in, in uh, Serena Beach. Which I'm sure many people perhaps haven't heard of unless they've gone there because conserving butterflies um, is not your normal thing. We talk about, you know, elephant conservation and, and the need to protect our rhinos and lions, but why butterflies? Well, you know, there was, uh, they play a major part in, in, in you know, with nature. Pollination uh, and all of that. Yes, and um, there was a butterfly expert who came and spoke to us and said, you know, he would help in setting up a butterfly center. Uh, and I may have to consult my paper here. Sure. And I know that we have, since we started the, uh, uh, the center, we've released 255,000 butterflies. Really? So, you know, that's again a, 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 a great um, um, initiative and we feel very satisfied. Um, again, at one stage we were we were informed that a number of turtle eggs were being poached by fishermen along the coast and uh, we started a program um, with assistance from uh, Halla Park and there again you know we have statistics where over a number of years we have rewarded fishermen uh, who bring eggs to us we have hatcheries at the hotel and uh, in, in the last few years, uh, close to 52,000 uh, eggs have been uh, brought to us. And the survival rate is 81%. I think we've released 83,000, uh, sorry, 43,000 turtles into the sea, you know. So, and our guests play a part, our staff play a part. They do. So, um, you know, there are a number of initiatives that uh, we have introduced over the years. So Serena really is just more than um, your hotel for one to sort of go have a meal or, or stay the night. There's so much more that the hotel is doing. Why is it important that hotel chains or big organizations and companies do get involved in conservation? I think, you know, we, we have seen um, the damage that has been done through irresponsible practices, whether it's poaching, whether it's uh, damage to the environment because some irresponsible uh, players have been, um, you know, uh, not treating their effluents well, etc. And I think if we are going to uh, be in business uh, for for many years to come. We've got to make sure that whatever we do now, you know, that sustainability is, is, is given priority. Um, I also uh, feel that, you know, for, for clients today who are much better informed, the days when people just came for a beach holiday and lay on their pool bed for six, seven hours under the sun are gone. I think people want to feel educated when they are uh, on holiday. I believe that the guests of today also uh, will, will play, pay um, a premium uh, to stay at properties which, are, which can demonstrate uh, responsible uh, practices. Um, you know, and I think it's the same with, you know, the program that you're doing. Um, you know, Paula has, for example, been a great uh, campaigner for Stop Ivory, and, uh, and, and I think, you know, it's our responsibility. We've all, uh, to play our part, you know, we've all uh, done well out of tourism. Um, and I think it's, it's very important. And what's your advice to perhaps other hotel chains or the, the industry as a whole in terms of uh, conservation efforts? Well, I think, you know, initially one would say this is a, 
uh, you know, this is at a cost. And I think there is nervousness about uh, making that investment. But I can assure you that once you start, you have a track record, you're able to demonstrate uh, that you're, you are transparent and you are making uh, a difference. There are funds available, like today we partners partnered with Lions International, the Aga Khan Foundation, uh, the World Wildlife Fund, uh, Norfund, uh, and a number of other uh, organizations who are prepared to support us. But I think you've got to make that initial investment, you've got to change the culture, uh, you've got to get your employees involved. You know, uh, I, I remember a month ago, uh, 40 of our staff uh, sacrificed a weekend and went to Mount Kenya to plant trees with a school. Uh, and that to me is, is, is very satisfying. So it's also, you know, I think it's, it's, it's motivation for the staff. And at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure that there is a return. There certainly, there certainly is, most definitely. I think with a number of corporates, the, the uh, initial investment is what perhaps makes them nervous. Right. Well, you know, on a personal level, what does wildlife and nature mean to you? Because you lead this group, so definitely some of these initiatives, of course, fall under you. But there's got to be some sort of um, personal attachment um, to wildlife and conservation. Well, my first management job was um, assistant manager at the lodge in Savo West. Oh really? Many many years ago and I won't tell you how many <laughs> years ago. Uh, that was Anglia Safari Lodge. Um, so as a young man uh, having just completed my hotel management uh, I was placed in Savo West and I was very fortunate that those days uh, I was able to interact with the likes of David Sheldrick, David and Daphne Sheldrick, um, and Ted Goss, who was the warden in Savo West. And, um, you know, I, I was just amazed at the fantastic work they were doing, whether it was empty poaching, whether it was discipline in the park, um, and, and that really converted me. So yes, I, and then, you know, being in charge of developments like in Tanzania, when we developed our lodges there, you know, we, we went through environmental impact assessment studies, not just meeting the regulatory requirements, but going over and above uh, what we were expected to do. And I think it's been very educational for me, it's been very satisfying and whether I'm with Serena or not, uh, for the rest of my life I will do whatever I can to play my part in conserving uh, our natural resources for future generations. All right, leading by example. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for sharing that insight. There really is so much more to Serena Hotel than one might think. Appreciate you. your time. Thank you. With me here on NTV Wild Talk, Mahmoud Jam Mohammed, the managing director of the Serena Hotel, speaking to me about what they do for conservation and how they give back. All right, from here, I am now heading on to Safaricom to find out more about how they're involved. So now I am at Safaricom House and remember that Safaricom is in fact the biggest integrated communications company in the region. You might know Safaricom as the mobile phone subscriber, but Safaricom in fact does a lot more for conservation and communities as well. Joining me now is Sanda Ojiambo. She is the head of corporate responsibility here at Safaricom. And we're gonna find out more about what Safaricom does in terms of conservation. Sanda, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, as I said, many people just think uh, Safaricom, mobile phone, SIM card, data bundles, but there's so much more to what you do. Tell us how you are involved in conservation. 
Okay, so um, other than the mobile phone uh, company and services that you've mentioned, Safaricom has two foundations. And our foundations are what we call our corporate social investment vehicles, by which we interact with communities, we partner with communities, and we also involve our staff in interacting and partnering with communities. And through those two foundations, actually, environmental conservation is one of our largest pillars. And we truly do believe that it is an area that we do need to invest in as a responsible corporate citizen. Why is that, though? I mean, it's so interesting to know that conservation takes a big bulk of um, how you spend your time and your social responsibility. Why? Why is the, in the environment in the wild important to Safaricom? Well, if I looked at it at a very simple level, really the environment is our future. Without a sustainable environment, without forests, without foliage, without animals, we really won't have a habitat to live in. You and I right now live in a very beautiful place where in an hour away we can be in the Rift Valley, we could be in the Maasai Mara, we could be at the beach. But if we don't conserve that for the future, then your kids, my kids, won't really have anywhere to go to. Right. So what then is Safaricom doing if you take us through some of the projects? One of them is um, very well known, and that is the connection with the Leo Marathon. Uh, tell us more about that. Right, so the Safaricom Marathon is uh, the an Safaricom important... Lewa the Safaricom Lewa Marathon, all right. <laughs> so it happens in Lewa. Yes. So it's, it's a great marathon that we put on. A lot of people see it as simply a marathon. I think the real story lies in the funding that we raise and what we do with that money. A lot of the money goes towards conserving the communities and the institutions around Lewa, which is the area where the marathon is held. And Lewa, of course, is a very unique conservancy with lots of species of wildlife. So a lot goes into uh, training of rangers, uh, making sure there's no poaching, going into anti-poaching activities, but also creating awareness so that humans and wildlife can live in peace and in harmony. So part of that is also working with communities to understand where we can put in the natural barriers between wildlife and humans and have them living together. Now, Sandra, you mentioned that you also involve your staff as well. How important is it for an organization to not only just, you know, um, privately in an office sort of do their CSR work, but to get their people involved? So, you know, as you walked into the building, you probably saw the words transforming lives all over the walls. So for us at Safaricom, transforming lives is really what we do ingrained within the DNA of the 6,000 or so employees that we have. So it's not just that we have foundations that are fortunate to be able to give money, it's about how much do we as staff also embody that transforming life ethos. So actually at present, more than 60, close to 70% of Safaricom staff are involved in communities. There's some fantastic stuff we've done around conservation, not just the marathon, which itself is very grueling, <laughs> but on a lighter note. I've never done note, it, I've got to say, well, you I've never to, done you need, it. You need to give it a shot. I do. Yeah? Um, there's a five kilometer race, right. which is my favorite. <laughs> I can imagine. So um, other than that, we do go out with staff and grow trees. And we've done this at places such as Ngarindari Forest, which is in Timau, a very large conservancy. We've been there for years on end, and we take probably up to 100 staff and plant close to two to 3,000 trees over a weekend. Uh, we've also done this at Maui Buru, which is up in Naivasha. We're also doing some ecosystem conservation there. So then that's just in the environment, but we get involved in all other areas. How is this CSR making a difference and what impact is it actually making? Actually, there's some very practical things you can see. Um, let me start with something that's very close to home. So as you know, Nairobi is the only city in the world with a national park right at its core. And uh, one of the biggest challenges in that area has been the human-wildlife conflict. So we've worked with uh, the Nairobi Green Line to actually fence and restore the biodiversity around the Nairobi National Park. And why is that important? Because it's really important to have the animals where they are and keep our buildings and our homes and our industries where they should be. Um, and one of those very practical things we've also done is reforest the perimeter of the park. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we went back, you know, two years after planting and the trees have actually grown. So we're creating a natural boundary um, for animals and for humans. Uh, you go to places like Maui Buru, where we do what we call biodiversity conservation. So it's not just about planting trees, but it's about working with the community to, to get them to understand and value the whole ecosystem. So Maui Buru is very interesting because it's home to the Ogek community. Mm -hmm. And they do um, a lot of work around beekeeping and, you know, producing honey. So we work with them to make sure that they can do this in harmony with the ecosystem. We also look at communities that are currently squatting, cutting down trees and damming rivers and try to find alternative economic uh, opportunities for them as well, such that they're able to earn a living without having to um, you know, cut trees down for charcoal or dam the water. And so, you know, in that way, you get to regenerate the entire ecosystem. 
Um, a lot of people may not know, but Maweburu is home to the bongo, mm -hmm. which is a very rare species. And we do hope that by all of our efforts, we'll be able to create a habitat that they can continue to live forever. So really, there is so much more that Safaricom does. As I said, when one thinks of Safaricom, they just probably think um, mobile phone and internet. What then, Sander, is your advice to other organizations and huge corporations? As you said, you know, Safaricom employs maybe 6,000 or so uh, people. How crucial is it that other organizations follow suit and take that responsibility? Can I just go back to a really exciting thing that we do? Because you did mention mobile phones. Sure. One of the things that we also do is, do is get involved in animal tracking. And this is really exciting because this is where our technology meets our corporate social investment. Right. And right now we are tracking uh, elephants, we're tracking lions, we're tracking gravy zebra up in um, the northern parts of Kenya and Hirola, which is a rare kind of antelope. Yes, and of course the gravy zebra is very rare now as well. Absolutely. And what it really involves is just creating a special collar that goes around the neck of the animal into which you insert a SIM card and then the project or the program then is able to track their movements. And when they are off or not moving for a long time or go off a usual pattern, mm -hmm. you're able to then alert the KWS or rangers to go in and check on the animals. And we think from all that I've heard from our partners, it has been a very, very useful tool to just check in on where animals are, check in on their migratory right. patterns and also hopefully help prevent poaching. That's brilliant. So really there is a direct connection between SIM card and <laughs> conservation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who would have thought? That, yes. that is excellent. Um, so innovative as well. But what now is your advice to other organizations and huge corporations who perhaps aren't doing enough for conservation? Uh, because Safaricom is clearly doing a lot. I mean, what I'd say is really, you know, the environment is our future. We will not have a sustainable, you actually won't have a sustainable business environment if we continue to deplete our environment and not actually conserve our ecosystem. Um, you know, also, if you look at it from a purely economic perspective, tourism is really important for the economy. And if we're not able to continue to maintain where our animals live and thrive, that really may put a dent into our overall earnings as a company. So that's really critical as well. You know, in the, in the scheme of things in terms of corporate and corporate investment, what I would say is that, you know, there's never an act that is too small. If you're able to take out your staff and go and plant some trees in an area, if you're able to, you know, make contributions towards uh, animal protection, that's always a contribution. And on the other hand, if you have enough resources to partner and do things with other organizations on a larger scale, that's great. I don't think any one corporate can address the entirety of the environmental conservation challenges we have. So for us, it's really about partnership and looking at what, what we can do together as the corporate. Of course, it is really, really important. But of course, you are, you know, the head of corporate responsibility here at Safaricom. Mm -hmm. So definitely, these come under your docket. Yes. There's got to be some sort of personal interest in wildlife and the environment mm -hmm. uh, on your part. Yes. Uh, what is that? You know, what, what drives you and what are you passionate about when it comes to the environment? I really think it's actually our wildlife as a whole. As I said, we are really fortunate. In an hour, you could be in all sorts of different ecosystems. But for me, I think our wildlife heritage and the contribution it has towards tourism and our whole legacy story as a great tourist destination is really, really important. But added to that, of course, you only see wildlife in their natural habitat. Yeah. So destroy the natural habitat and there goes our tourism. For, so for me, they are very intricately linked. And as a proud Kenyan, I do think it's really important for us to do our part. Sanda, thanks very much for joining us and sharing with us how Safaricom plays its part in giving back to conservation. Much appreciated. With me, Sanda Ojiambo, she is the head of social responsibility at Safaricom. All right, we have been showcasing four different organizations on this show and how they contribute to conservation. Clearly, it is making a difference, even though there is plenty more to do. From that, though, we shift focus and now it's time to turn to you. Here are the photos that you sent in on our Wild Pick segment. This is a snap of Lucy Wanjiku. She was on Elephant Hill, posing on the summit. She was preparing for a Mount Kenya climb. And then at Lake Quenya in Magadi, this is Joseph Mwangi. He was showing his friend Brenda a grey-headed hornbill. And Joseph says he's training to be a nature guide with Nature Kenya. In the Maasai Mara, this is Marie Nyaga. She was taking a selfie with lions in the background while on a game drive. She says she wanted to go on a game drive because she loves animals so much and she's a tour and travel consultant and had to experience it for herself. 
In Savo East, this is Levi Nzomo. He was showing some love to a baby orphaned elephant and says he was there for a work team building exercise and says that poaching must stop. In Thiri Center at Meru, this is Ephraim Mbaya. He was posing with a tortoise and says that he really loves nature. Well, if you want your photo showcased on our Wild Pick segment, just like our NTV Wild Facebook page and send a photo that shows you celebrating nature via private message. Include your full name, tell us where the photo was taken, what you were doing and why. And now, here's what's coming up on the NTV Wild documentary series on Saturday night. This adorable little elephant is the newest arrival here at the orphanage and the sweetest little elephant I've ever seen. He was found stuck in the mud on the banks of Lake Jippy in Savo West. There were lots of footprints around where he was stuck which indicated that the herd had tried very hard to get him out. But that doesn't stop him being one of the most playful. <laughs> So all this time you may have thought that protecting the environment and our wildlife is up to you, me and the NGOs. But through this episode I certainly hope that you have realised that the responsibility lies with us all, including the big corporations and the small companies too. Nature lies in all our hands. That's where we leave it on NTV Wild Talk with me, Smriti Vidyarthi. Thanks very much for watching. See you again Tuesday, 10pm. I think the first show that I got emotional was the first time that I was really stirred was mm. when we saw the um, all the <laughs> take leave for another two weeks. Next week and the week after I'll be. We need to come together. Okay. Will team know when this is going off? <laughs> yeah, you're comfortable with that? So it's about... Okay. Yeah, and it's not easy. Oh, you know, it's easy yeah. for us. What do we got to do? What do we got to do?